The three most important pieces of financial advice I will always instill in my daughters as a financial planner with over 20 years experience. This is Sugar Mama TV. Hi everyone, welcome back to Sugar Mama TV. I am financial planner, Canna Campbell, and this is Sugar Mama TV. Before we begin today's video, a quick reminder to please make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. And of course you are following me on Instagram at Sugar Mama TV. Now today I wanted to share with you the three non-negotiable important pieces of financial advice that I will always instill in my daughters, Apple, and tiger. Oh, by the way, this is Peppy, Peppy Truffle. She doesn't need my financial advice because I am the sugar mama. All right, so what I'm about to share with you really comes from a place of financial resilience, <laughs> bless you, financial independence, and financial empowerment backed with education. All right, number one, saving is great. Saving on a regular basis is wonderful, but investing on a regular basis, particularly over the long run when you're including growth assets such as shares, domestic and international shares, and even property is way better. Now, why would I say that? Well, young people have the benefit of time. They have the benefit of time to watch the market go through its ups and downs, its pullbacks, its corrections. And quite often, some of those corrections actually present amazing once in a lifetime buying opportunities. You're not given the same opportunity over the long run necessarily with savings and a savings plan. You want your money working as hard as possible for you, but in an efficient and effective manner. So for example, if I took $100 savings and set up a regular savings plan, earning an average interest rate of say 4.5% over the next 30 years, excluding taxes and fees, that would leave me approximately $76,000 in savings, which is amazing, don't get me wrong. However, if I was to invest $100, with a regular investment plan of $100 per month, exactly the same, assuming these returns, excluding fees and taxes, that portfolio could potentially be worth up to $158,000 and paying you a growing passive income stream of over $6,000 per annum. Now, when you are young, you also have the option to be able to reinvest confidently. Because you have a secure job, you can afford to reinvest all of that income, which means not spending it. You'll put it back into the portfolio for future compounding growth opportunities, which is why savings doesn't have the same impact as investing over the long run. Plus, the income on that savings portfolio versus the share portfolio are very different. How much passive income would you prefer? This much or this much? And as I always say, the more passive income you have in your life, the more financial freedom you have. So for my girls, this is a non-negotiable. You must have an investment plan in place at all times. Number two, superannuation. Your superannuation portfolio is so important. In fact, your superannuation account is just as important as your investment portfolio because essentially they are the same, but they are obviously locked away by the government for your long-term benefit. It's a blessing in disguise because they are removing temptation to spend it and blow it. So what my advice to my daughters is that they must always pay attention to their superannuation. It should be invested correctly. And if they can, they have a regular contribution plan going into their superannuation portfolio either through salary sacrificing or an after-tax contribution. Now, if they're in a situation where they may not necessarily be able to afford to do it, what I will recommend is that they have something rather than nothing at all, even if it's only $10 a week, because $10 a week can still make a profound difference over the long run. And when those opportunities through life present themselves, such as promotions and pay rises, tax returns, and other potential windfalls that may happen as a part of life, they can then look to bump up their regular investment plan into their superannuation account. But of course, always knowing that that money is locked away, but for their long-term benefit. And of course, all of that money in their superannuation account must be invested in alignment to their risk 
profile, focusing on maximizing all those long-term growth opportunities as well as passive income opportunities. This is most definitely a non-negotiable. And of course, this advice still applies for if they ever take time off to have a baby or to raise a family. Their superannuation never falls down to the bottom of their priorities. Now, why would I recommend this? Well, of course, I always want to make sure that my girls remain financially independent. They're never reliant upon a government or a person for their financial security and independence. And number three, personal insurance. The moment my girls have a full-time job, I'm going to insist that they take out personal insurance, such as income protection, the most important cover, number two, trauma, number three, TPD cover, and number four, some life cover. Now, there are various ways to structure this or package things so that it can be cost effective. So for anyone who's thinking and wondering about this, go see a financial planner and get some great personal advice. But for my girls, I want to make sure that they realize they are not invincible. Things happen in life. Accidents happen and at times illnesses may happen. I never want them to ever worry about money if they get sick or are injured. I want to make sure that if anything should happen to them, that they have the financial freedom to be able to focus on recovery and rehabilitation. And one of the ways that you can do this is by taking out the appropriate levels and types of personal insurance. This will help make sure that they remain financially independent and strong. On top of that sense of peace of mind, knowing that their financial future is never going to be compromised because of an accident or an illness. And I myself took my personal insurance policies out in my early 20s and I have never changed them. And these policies I still have in place today. So thank you everyone for watching today's video. I really hope that you found it informative, inspiring, and of course, you now know what to talk to your children about when it comes to their financial future so that they can make great decisions with their money. Thank you everyone for watching today's video. And of course, make sure you give it this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, share it with your family and friends, and of course, that you are subscribed to my channel. Ciao for now.